Good afternoon, everyone. ITEC India welcomes all the participants for today's regional distance learning seminar session. Today's topic is first line ARD in adults and adolescents, management of ARV toxicities. And the speaker is Dr. Rajiv Day. Dr. Rajiv Day is a technical specialist public health with ITEC India. We welcome you, sir, for today's session and request you to start the session. Good afternoon, Sweta. Good afternoon, everybody. So today's topic, topic is management of ARB toxicities. So, so here, you'll have to speak a bit louder. Okay, okay. Yeah, I have got the common call now. Right, right, right. It's 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 clear now. Yeah. So today's uh, session objectives are uh, we are going to know the dolutogravid toxicity, the newest uh, edition in the uh, ART in uh, India and the uh, world over, and the grading of drug toxicity, others, uh, other uh, NNRTI, NRTI, etc., drug substitution versus switch, and guidance in impaired renal function. We are on So, ARB can be. To, uh, uh, sorry, so if you can skip the slides. Yes. Introduction, but it is okay, no? This one. Yes, sir. Introduction. Hello. Yeah. So, as I was saying, drug toxicity can be classified into class or into drug specific uh, toxicities. And this can range from low grade intolerance, which is self limiting, to as high as life threatening internet uh, drug toxicities. And we need to differentiate the drug toxicity from complications of HIV, uh, uh, manifestation of a new OI, for example, in the complications. Uh, uh, HIV-induced uh, nephropathy can be there, so we, uh, we we need to differentiate it from uh, toxicities and manifestation of a new OI. Say, for example, uh, in uh, <clears throat> leishmaniasis, many a times we will find uh, uh, bicytopenia and all, but uh, we might uh, wrongly attribute it to it to zidobudin. So we need to differentiate from OI and then IRIS, that is immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome. For example, a person uh, can develop sign and symptoms of tuberculosis, and which uh, we might consider it to be a hypersensitivity to abacavir also. So we need to differentiate from IRIS. Then comorbid conditions, as I said, uh, 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 that uh, there are many co comorbid conditions which can which need to be differentiated from the drug toxicity and concomitant medications because uh, nowadays the in 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 our ART management we come across uh, advanced HIV disease management where a patient is exposed to a number of molecules so there can be drug drug interactions and before attributing all the side effects to ARV we need to be certain that this is the uh, the other concomitant medications are not producing the side effects now ARV toxicities the class toxicities that we were discussing in adult and adolescent can be divided based on the different classes of antiretroviral uh, drugs. For example, uh, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor, the class is mitochondrial uh, toxicity, basically zidobudin, stabudin, and since stabudin is phased out of the ART program in India, so this incidence of lactic acidosis, etc., lipodystrophy are seen less nowadays compared to previous days when uh, stabudin was in use. Now, other things are pancreatitis, lipodystrophy, hepatic steatosis, peripheral neuropathy, anemia, myopathy. This can be produced by all the members of the uh, NSRTI, that is, uh, zidobudin, stabudin, lemudin. But the frequency is less with zidobudin and lemudin compared to stabudin. Now, NTRTI, the single member tenophobic, it, it gives rise to nephrotoxicity and bone uh, demineralization. Then integrase inhibitor, there are two candidates, dolutogravid and altigravid, and both of them produce similar kind of side effects, but the um, degree, uh, the frequency of side effect is uh, much less in dolutogravid than in altigravid. And most of the metabolic side effects like weight gain, hepatotoxicity, and allergic reaction. And the last group is NNRTI, that is ifavirenz and nevirapine. 
So both of them can produce skin rash and hepatitis. However, the frequency of uh, hepatitis and skin rash is much more with nevirapin than with ifibrinogen. And ifibrinogen has got a classic, uh, a unique uh, side effect, which is uh, neuropsychiatric manifestations. Now let us go into the individual member of a particular class. So uh, in tenophobia, that is NNR, uh, uh, NTRTI, tenophobia, the main is renal toxicity and bone demineralization. And in Zidovodin, we all know that the anemia, neutro macrocytic anemia, neutropenia, bone marrow suppression, and gastrointestinal intolerance, headache, insomnia, myopathy, lactic acidosis, hyperpigmentation of the skin, and nail. Lamivudin is the most uh, safe uh, antiretrovirus out of all the antiretrovirals that these are available in uh, uh, our national program and very rarely it can give rise to rash. Vakabir, yes, uh, reaction in 3% of individual and it can also be fatal. The most, uh, ch uh, uh, the challenge in differentiating Avakabir from other common infectious diseases uh, uh, is very important because the hypersensitivity manifests itself as RTI common cold and uh, gastrointestinal uh, infection kind of thing. So we will find fever, rash, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, respiratory symptoms like sore throat, shortness of breath. The challenging after reaction can be fatal. And we all know that abacavid is mostly used in children. So in children, the respiratory infection, the common cold and the GI symptoms are also quite common. And if we miss, and if the patient doesn't have rash and all other symptoms, then it would be very difficult on our part to uh, diagnose it properly as the side effect of abacavid. And if we miss the disease, the candidate can may die. And there are clues like uh, HLA-B, 5701 gene uh, is uh, frequently linked with tobacco with hypersensitivity and is present with less than 5% of adults children in India. And hypersensitivity usually occurs during the first six weeks of therapy, but may occur at any time. It can potentially be fatal. Whenever hypersensitivity reaction is noticed, tobacco must be discontinued immediately and never to re-challenge. <clears throat> so, uh, with ifibrinogen, as we said earlier, it is central nervous system neuropsychiatric uh, side effects, mostly dizziness, somnolence, insomnia, confusion, hallucination, agitation, uh, nightmare, personality changes, and rash can occur, but less common compared to nevirapine. And we can limit the neuropsychiatric side effects of ifibrinogen by avoiding heavy fatty meal at the dinner time or by taking ifibrinogen before the dinner. Because fat, high fat concentration of the meal in, uh, uh, increases the ifibrinogen absorption, leading to more of course neuropsychiatric symptoms. Now with nevirapine, the most important side effects are the hepatitis, which can be life-threatening to a hypersensitive reaction uh, from mild, moderate to Stephen Johnson, epidermal, uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis. And patients who develop severe hepatic toxicity or grade four skin rash, uh, while taking nevirapine should never be ritualized. And we should make it a habit of writing down the side effects in the white card and the grades also. So, uh, thereafter, uh, the candidate atazanavir, ritonavir. So here we find hyperbilirubinemia, which is unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia and is not, uh, 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 and it doesn't require change of a molecule. We need to simply assure the patient that you can have uh, any uh, uh, hyperbilirubinemia, but it is not going to affect you. And uh, atazanavir, ritonavir is uh, uh, comparatively produces less uh, lipid abnormalities uh, compared to lopinavir, ritonavir, and there can be hyperglycemia, fat maldistribution, nephrolithiasis, and uh, electrocardiographic abnormalities. And uh, uh, lopinavir, ritonavir. Uh, can produce diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, abnormal lipid profile, glucose intolerance. PI should not be prescribed with simvastatin as they significantly increase the level of simvastatin leading to rhabdomyolysis and uh, uh, kidney failure. Now, <clears throat> dolutagravir. 
and relative gravity. So we have similar kind of uh, side effects in both the cases. However, the intensity or severity of the side effect is much less in tolutagravir compared to raltigravir, and these include apparatoxicity, weight gain, allergic reaction, insomnia, and in addition to that, the myalgia, rhabdomyolysis, myopathy are more common with the raltigravir and increase the risk for rash or hypersensitivity reaction in few people. Now, NRTI, as a drug class, we have zidobudin, lemibudin, sebudin, and abacavir. Now, in terms of uh, duration after which the side effects occur, we can divide it into short-term toxicities, medium-term toxicities, and long-term toxicities. So, in the short term, most of the side effects are in the short term and medium-term, which can be even long-term toxicities. But it is no more in the program, so we need to consider about the short term and medium term toxicity. For zidobudin, it is headache, nausea, vomiting, malaise, diarrhea, bone marrow suppression, macrocytic anemia. And in the long term, again, it is bone marrow suppression, macrocytic anemia, hyperpigmentation of the skin and, skin and nail, and lactic acidosis, proximal myopathy. For stebudin, as we uh, have discussed earlier, because it is not in the program, so better to keep it. Abacavir, hypersensitivity reaction in 3 to 5 percent, and it can be fatal, characterized by fever, rash, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, respiratory symptoms like sore throat, cough, shortness of breath. So here we need to uh, remember that whenever we find, <coughs> whenever we find respiratory symptom along with the GI symptom, then we should be alert uh, that uh, it can be due to abacavir hypersensitivity. Now, integrist trans transfer inhibitors, that is uh, dolutagravir, dolutagravir, as I said earlier, nausea, diarrhea, insomnia, rash, hepatotoxicity uh, in the short and medium term. And for NN NNRTI, ifavirin and nevirapine, it is only in the short term, that is drowsiness, dizziness, confusion, vivid dreams, skin rashes, hepatotoxicity, and nevirapine, skin rash, and hepatotoxicity. But the uh, intensity or severity of the skin rash and hepatotoxicity is more common with nevirapine than with ipavirin. <clears throat> now, there are certain overlapping toxicities. For example, bone marrow separation can be caused by zidobudin, cortrimoxazole, diapsone, pyrimethamine, cancyclovir, amphotericin B, ibavirin, other uh, uh, chemotherapies for uh, cancers, etc. So we need to differentiate the cause of uh, bone marrow separation, and we should not bluntly say that because of ART, it is uh, the bone marrow separation. Uh, Hepatotoxicity can be produced by levirapine, atazanavir, lopinavir, ritonavir, isoniazide, gifampicin, pyrazinamide, mucunazole, cortrimoxazole, dolutagravir. And peripheral neuropathy is uh, possible with mistabudin and isoniazide, Pancreatitis and cortrimoxazole. <clears throat> then, uh, uh, if we consider dolutagravir, it is the first line drug in India for all new patients to be enrolled in the National ART program and has a good overall safety profile. Fewer metabolic side effects, minor side effects like insomnia, GI intolerance, and skin rash are reported in initial phase of starting DPT and may not require change of drug. And the main concern are due to neural tube defects in fetus when used in pregnancy, especially in the first trimester, and more, more, more importantly, in the first month of uh, pregnancy, and then weight gain. Reporting on serious adverse events of hyperglycemia or diabetes mellitus was limited across studies. So all the studies didn't find that hyperglycemia and diabetes, because it is a new molecule in the Indian context, uh, only from 2020 we have started using dolutagravir, and uh, different studies are going on. So after some time, so I, uh, we hope the sufficient evidence will be there for us to say confidently whether it gives us to irreversible hyperglycemia or diabetes or uh, it is a reversible one. So if we go through the different uh, side effects and their uh, incidence in a particular patient, uh, in a, in Brazil, over 72,030 PLHIV, it was seen that only 2.24% uh, uh, reports adverse reaction with GTG. And starting with the uh, most common is nausea, then diarrhea, then headache, then dizziness, then insomnia, then drowsiness, vomiting, itching, abdominal pain, and alopecia. Out of those reported uh, adverse events, 
88.73% was not, not serious, 0.68% uh, put the lives at risk, 0.99% caused persistent or severe disability, and 1.42% led to hospitalization. 8.54% did not lead to hospitalization, disability, or lives at risk, but was nevertheless they're serious. So we see most of the side effects are uh, 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 are in the short term, and with time, the uh, patient get uh, used to it, and they can tolerate these side effects also. Now, DTG and neural tube defect. The potent, uh, with the initial period of uh, DTG, there was a significant increase in neural tube defect was found, but the later evidences suggest that uh, the neural tube defect with the use of DTG in the preconception or during conception or after con conception is uh, not uh, more than the other uh, non-DTG ART regimen. And incidence of neural tube defect is found to be less than 0.2%. And other adverse uh, uh, pregnancy outcomes like miscarriage, stillbirth, preterm birth, low birth weight, small for gestational age, neonatal mortality were not increased with maternal DTG compared with efibrinase containing regimen. And the regimens were started preconception or during pregnancy. So uh, what should be our approach to using DTG in pregnant women or the uh, women of childbearing uh, age? Now, women should be given all the information, medical information properly so that they can come to a right uh, decision uh, which is uh, good for their health and their babies. And we need to stress upon the uh, uh, benefits of uh, Dolutagavir, particularly in line that uh, it is uh, a, uh, the viral separation is fastest with the TG based regimen compared to other regimen. Other regimen might take two to three months' time for viral separation, while DTG takes uh, one to two months' time for viral separation. And with viral separation, chances of uh, transmission of uh, HIV from mother to child is much less. So in this way, if we can, uh, if we can uh, provide information to the mother, hopefully they will decide the best. Uh, uh, they will choose the best ART regimen that is dolutegravir even during pregnancy. So, uh, women of childbearing age should be provided appropriate information about benefits and risks associated with DTG and medical guidance that is appropriate to her situation and supported in making informed choice. If a woman plans to become pregnant, woman should be counseled on the benefits of DTG. And even after, after describing all the benefits of DTG, if the patient refused to take uh, DTG-based regimen, then we should provide them with efibrinase-based uh, ART regimen. Women who are already on DTG-based regimen become pregnant, we should continue dolutegravir because a pregnant woman comes to know that uh, she is pregnant only after two to three months' time. By this time, whatever harm has to happen will happen which mostly happens in the first uh, month. So we should uh, continue to rotogravir and probably we'll go for uh, uh, anomaly scans in those patients. All newly diagnosed pregnant women, irrespective of the duration of pregnancy, shall be offered lutogravir based regimen as the preferred regimen. Now it depends on the patient whether they will uh, take it or they will refuse. If they refuse, we should respect and we should give uh, if a brain's based regimen, but our effort should be uh, uh, initiation of uh, dolutegravir based regimen in women because the benefit is much more than the harm. All women who are pregnant and do not on uh, and are not on dolutegravir based regimen should be shifted to dolutegravir based regimen as soon as possible. Now DTG and weight gain. Weight gain was mostly seen with uh, when ART backbone is with uh, tough that is tenofovir alfanamide in uh, uh, which is not in the program, so we are not using TAF. So chances of weight gain is less in our population. And effects of gender, that is, uh, it was seen that African women were more prone for weight gain uh, than men. And uh, baseline city food count low and uh, high viral RNA were the prognostic factor for high weight gain. And requirement of, there, there is a need for uh, more uh, uh, data and more uh, evidence to accumulate before we can take a stand on this uh, DTG weight weight gain in the Indian population. Renal insufficiency and DTG. DTG can produce tubular secretion, uh, reduce tubular secretion through inhibition of OCT2, that is uh, organic uh, cation transporter 2, 
with the noticeable non-pathogenic and non-progressive increase in serum creatinine with no risk of renal toxicity. So we can continue and, uh, and we need to be vigilant, particularly we will uh, monitor urine protein along with serum creatinine. For PLHIV with renal insufficiency, no dose adjustment uh, for uh, uh, dulutegravir is required, except on the days of dialysis when a second dose has to be given after the dialysis. Renal or hepatic insufficiency. No dose adjustment of TTG is needed in hepatic insufficiency, except for TALPA uh, category C, where uh, we should not use TTG. But in child park A and B, we can go for the rotogravir without any uh, risk. The points that need to be considered before prescribing DTG are adequate counseling on lifestyle modification and dietary change for all PLHIV so that they do not gain weight, and measurement of blood pressure regularly to detect hypertension, especially in pregnant women. And monitoring and treatment, uh, treating metabolic complications like uh, hyperglycemia, lipid profile, etc. Monitoring weight and associated complication as per uh, toxicity monitoring. As part of toxicity monitoring, the weight uh, and uh, weight to be measured. Xenophobic toxicity. Tadiap is a commonly used antiretroviral drug which has a relatively long half life, allowing once daily dosing, and it makes compliance uh, PLHIV more compliant and adherent to the ART regimen. And it has a good overall safety profile with few metabolic side effects and mitochondrial toxicity. The major side effect, as you know, it is renal toxicity in 3 to 5 percent of uh, PLHIV, and there is decrease in uh, bone mineral density. <clears throat> now, nephrotoxicity uh, is uh, characterized by increase in serum creatinine with or without proteinuria. And the pattern can be ATN, acute tubular necrosis, to proximal, proximal tubular dysfunction, that is Fanconi syndrome, characterized by normoglycemic glycosuria, hypophosphatemia, hypokalemia, hypouricemia, mild metabolic acidosis, proteinuria, and amino, amino aciduria. And then CKD, chronic kidney disease. <clears throat> now, what are the different risk factors for the development of kidney injury due to exposure to TDF are elevated serum creatinine at baseline, older age, diabetic, presence of diabetes mellitus, hypertension, advanced HIV disease, low body weight, hepatitis C, concomitant use of post TPI, and concurrent use of nephrotoxic drug. Now, given the potential for nephrotoxicity, we should avoid administration of uh, TTF to those people who have a baseline EGFR of less than 60 or elevated serum creatinine. Renal functions and proteinuria should be monitored during the use of xenophobia every three months for the first year and then six months and monitor urine for protein and sugar more frequent monitoring may be appropriate for patients with additional kidney disease risk factors for example those who are having hypertension uh, pre-morbid hypertension and diabetes uh, we can go for more frequent monitoring of uh, kidney uh, frequent monitoring of uh, urinary protein and sugar Given the potential for nephrotoxicity in xenophobia treated patients who experience a confirmed GFR decline by more than 25% from baseline and to a level less than 60 ml per ml, uh, 60 ml per minute, it is recommended to substitute alternative ART drug for PDF. Particularly in those with evidence of tubular dysfunction. Abacaba is to be substituted for xenophobia and lemibutin dose. Uh, to be adjusted as per creatinine clearance if it is less than 30 ml per minute. If it is more than 30 ml, there is no need of dose adjustment for many reasons. Now, TDF causes a modest uh, bone uh, loss, so that is demineralization, as measured by bone mineral density after initiation of ART, and is frequently uh, can be associated with fracture, in a, uh, and it is found in a retrospective study. Xenophobia causing Fanconi syndrome leads to hypophosphatemia, causing osteomalacia and more bone pain and uh, fractures. Pathological factors. Now, proactive approach to manage ART drug toxicity. So, we need to counsel and give proper information to the PLHIV in the preparedness counseling uh, with respect to the different uh, uh, early stages of treatment as part of preparedness counseling, uh, like. Uh, uh, in case how to differentiate between new clinical events after initiation of ART from IVs, 
and different side effect profile of the individual drugs that the person is prescribed and how to know the serious side effects and the serious grades of uh, uh, side effects when they are to uh, contact the ART center immediately. Now, clinical signs, symptoms, and management of adverse effect of antiretroviral drug. So, acute hepatitis can be caused by nevirapine and uh, PI, uh, boosted PI, and less commonly by ifavirin. And it's very, very uncommon with didovudin and stevudin. So, uh, the incidence is less than 1%. Now, clinical sign we know the acute hepatitis presents with jaundice, liver enlargement, gastrointestinal symptoms, fatigue, anorexia. Nevirapine induced hepatitis may have hypersensitive component like drug rash, systemic symptoms, and eosinophilia. Management uh, we need to monitor transaminases and bilirubin. If ART is more than five times the baseline, uh, then we need to stop ARVs until symptoms resolve. Nevirapine should be permanently discontinued and substituted and uh, substitute the most uh, likely offending ARV drugs. Now, acute pancreatitis is possible with stebudin and nevibudin. So, nowadays, uh, when stebudin is phased out, so any acute pancreatitis, we presume it to be due to nevibudin. And it presents with nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. And if possible, we uh, we should monitor serum pancreatic amylase and lipase. All antiretroviral drugs should be uh, stopped uh, momentarily. And uh, ART to be restarted with the change to an uh, with, with changes in NRTI, nevibudin should be replaced with uh, uh, either zidobudin, tenofovir, or other <clears throat> Lactic acidosis can be produced by all nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor, particularly stebudin. Now, the presentation is initial symptoms, uh, a prodromal symptom uh, may include generalized fatigue and weakness, gastrointestinal symptoms, like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, hepatomegaly, anorexia, or sudden unexplained weight loss, respiratory symptoms, tachypnea, dyspnea, or neurological symptoms, including motor weakness. And management is to discontinue all ART. Symptoms may continue or worsen even after discontinuation of ART. We should uh, appro uh, give appropriate supportive therapy. And we can resume ART by replacing the offending ART, uh, uh, offending antiretroviral drugs with uh, either avocavir or tenofovir. Then hypersensitivity is possible with avocavir and nevirapine. Uh, Abagavir, as we said, it is a combination of rash. Uh, it, it's a combination of rash with uh, uh, respiratory symptoms and the GI symptoms. While in uh, nevirapine, uh, there can be systemic symptoms like fever, myalgia, arthralgia, hepatitis, eosinophilia, with or without ART. Now, management is discontinuation of ART until symptoms resolve. Uh, the react, uh, reaction progressively worsen with drug administration to diagnose and stop it. Uh, uh, hypersensitivity uh, progress and can be fatal. And uh, once we stop the medicine, we should uh, provide supportive therapy and we should not recommend with other therapy or negative as anaphylaxis treatment and that can happen. Once symptoms resolve, we can restart ART with a uh, different molecule using the uh, culprit molecule. If it is uh, abacavi, then we go for uh, protein, uh, protein inhibitor. Or an NRTI based regimen is Clinical signs and symptoms and management of adverse effects of antiretroviral drugs. So, here we find rash or drug eruptions, including Stephen Johnson syndrome and uh, TAN. Possible drugs are nevirapine, ifavirin, and rarely dimethyltryptamine. Clinical signs and symptoms rashes usually occur during the first two to four weeks of treatment. The rash is usually erythematous, maculopecular, confluent. Most prominent on the body and arms, may be pruritic and can occur with or without the fever. Life threatening Stephen Johnson syndrome or TAN has been reported in 0.3% uh, of infected uh, individuals receiving nevirapine. Management in milder cases, so we can give uh, antihistamines if rash is moderate, non progressing, and without mucosal or systemic uh, symptoms. Uh, consider substituting nevirapine to if a range after rash resolves. In moderate and severe cases, discontinue all ARV until symptoms resolve and give supportive treatment. Permanently discontinue nevirapine for rash with systemic symptoms such as fever, severe rash with mucosal lesions or articaria or stimulation or tan. Once resolved, switch ART regimen to different ARV class. 
as for example, two NRTI and one PI. Peripheral neuropathy is mostly seen in Stabudian, which is no more in the program. So, let us keep it. Then, diarrhea is possible in Lopinabi with Nervic. User watery diarrhea, usually self limiting, no need to discontinue ART. If uh, uh, the patient cannot tolerate, then we can uh, shift them to Atagenabe with Nervic with uh, uh, ART. Dyslipidemia, insulin resistance, and hyperglycemia is possible with all PIs and Ipavirin. So we should consider replacing the suspected PI by drugs with less risk of metabolic toxicity. Gastrointestinal intolerance can be produced by all the ARVs, and this uh, characterized by signs and symptoms of uh, gastritis, indigestion, etc., which are usually self-limited, and there is no need for discontinuing the ARV. We can provide supportive therapy. Hematological toxicities, as for example, anemia, leukopenia. It is produced most commonly by zidobodine and is characterized by fatigue, breathlessness, palpitation, that is the symptoms of uh, anemia. And if it is severe, that is hemoglobin less than 6.5 gram per dl, or absolute neutrophil count is less than 500 cells per cubic millimeter, we substitute with an NRTI that has less effect on bone marrow, as for example, stabudine, abacavir, or tenofovir. And we should uh, provide them with blood transfusion. Lipoatrophy and lipodystrophy. All NRTIs can give rise to uh, lipoatrophy and lipodystrophy, but most commonly, uh, the culprit agent is the stabilin. Most frequently, it was seen. It is no more in the program. So, we come across lipodystrophy and lipoatrophy less frequently nowadays. And it consists of the lipoatrophy or dystrophy is characterized by elevated total cholesterol, uh, low HDL cholesterol and elevated triglyceride, insulin resistance with hyperglycemia, central fat accumulation, that is visceral, breast, neck, and local fat accumulation, lipomas, buffalo hump, and generalized diminution of subcutaneous fat mass, lipoatrophy, including subcutaneous fat in the face, extremities, and buttock. And management is early replacement of suspected ARB drugs with xenophobia or abacavir, and consider aesthetic, aesthetic uh, treatment and physical exercise. Now, uh, neuropsychiatric uh, uh, side effects is produced by Ipavarinja mostly, and there is high risk of central nervous system effects in the first two weeks, which uh, comprises of confusion, abnormal thinking, nightmare, impaired concentration, depersonalization, abnormal dreams, dizziness, insomnia, euphoria, hallucination, suicidal ideation, severe depression has been reported in 2.4% uh, 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 of cases on Ipavarinja regimen. And management is usually self limited, no need to discontinue unless severe psychosis, and counsel to take evidence at night before bedtime. And renal toxicity is uh, possible with xenophobia, and features include the features of company syndrome and discontinue TDF and give supportive treatment for the management. And after resolution, replace xenophobia with another ARB. Ratio of drug eruptions, including Stephen Johnson's syndrome or TAN, the suspecting or holding NRTI may not always be appropriate. Quatrimoxazole can also uh, be an offending agent. There are sporadic reports on skin rashes induced by zidobudine, lopinavir, atazanavir, ritonavir, darunavir, raltegravir, tolutagravir, and lemibutin. It is essential to identify the offending drugs before appropriate action is initiated. Now, to identify the appropriate uh, drug, the offending drug, the Flow diagram is this. Uh, in case of severe rash uh, with the uh, dolotagravir based regimen, we stop all the ART, all the medicines, and after the rash subsides, after two to three weeks, we uh, put the patient on PLE. If tolerated, then it is confirmed that DTG is the culprit agent and we should replace DTG. And we will introduce quatrimoxazole later. Now, if rash reappear, then we can suspect either it is due to tenophobia or lemibudin. Once rash subsides, we give tenophobia uh, plus lemibudin for seven to ten days. If rash reappears, so that it is confirmed either due to tenophobia or due to lemibudin, then after the rash subsides, we give tenophobia monotherapy for seven to ten days. If rash do not appear, it is confirmed that the lemibudin is the offending drug. So we give tenofovir, zidobudine, and dolutagravir, 
and if the rash reappears, then it is confirmed that telophobia is now from the drug, and we substitute the telophobia with abacavir, and the lenalidine dose of is continued. Now, grading of toxicity this is important because based on the grade of uh, toxicity, either we continue with supportive treatment or we uh, stop altogether. So, the grades can be mild grade, moderate grade, severe grade, and potentially life threatening. That is one, two, three, and there is a possibility of another grade, fifth grade, that is death. So, the definition of mild grade is symptoms causing minimal or no interference with usual social and functional activities. Moderate grade means symptoms causing greater than minimal interference with usual social and functional activities. And severe means symptoms causing inability to perform usual social and functional activities. And potentially life threatening ones are the symptoms causing inability to perform basic self care or medical or operative interventions indicated to prevent permanent impairment, permanent disability, or death. Now, uh, <clears throat> Uh, mild uh, uh, adverse effect means uh, uh, our advice should be uh, changes of ART is not required. We can uh, wait and watch. In grade two also, changes of ART is not warranted. We simply wait and watch. And in grade three, it will usually be necessary to discontinue the suspected drug until the condition resolves. Subsequently, it may be possible to cautiously re-administer the same drug under closed monitoring. But in case of grade four, we discontinue all drugs. The offending agent should never be re-administered or re-challenged. And after Im improvement, we institute alternate ART regimen comprising of a drug substituted for the offending agent. So for different conditions, the gradings have uh, been mentioned. So for example, hemoglobin, we consider it to be uh, mild grade anemia as a side effect of antiretroviral therapy, so if it is uh, 8 to less than 9.5, we can call it as moderate grade uh, in, uh, side effect uh, if the hemoglobin is 7 to less than 8, and severe grade if it is 6.5 to uh, less than 7, and we consider it to be potentially life-threatening if the hemoglobin is less than 6.5. Similarly, for uh, absolute neutrophil count, uh, the uh, grade one is 1,000 to 1,500, while uh, uh, for potentially life-threatening, it is less than five, 500 cells per cubic millimeter. Similarly, for plated also we have, if it is less than 20,000 per cubic millimeter, we call it as uh, potentially life-threatening or grade four uh, side effects. Hyperbilirubinemia. If it is uh, uh, more than five times the upper limit of normal, we consider it to be potentially life-threatening. And glucose, if it is more than 500, it is uh, grade 4. And hypocalcemia, if it is less than 30 mg per DL, we consider it to be grade 4. And hyperglycemia, non-fasting, no, with, without any prior diabetes, uh, we consider it to be life, potentially life-threatening if it is more than 500 mg per DL. It is very difficult to remember all these things, so it is a good practice to keep this chart on the table, and we should consult the chart whenever such patient, uh, we need to treat such kind of a patient. Similarly, we have uh, mild grade, moderate grade, and severe grade uh, definitions for triglycerides, creatinine, AST, ALT, GGT, alkaline, phosphatase, bilirubin, amylase, pancreatic amylase, lipase, lactate, etc. So we need to consider these uh, tables whenever we encounter such kind of a patient who produce uh, a patient having a side effects due to ART, recent ART exposure. Similarly, for the symptoms also, we have grading. For example, nausea, mild or transient, reasonably reasonable intake maintained, it is grade one. In grade two, it is uh, moderate or intake decreased for less than three days. Severe, uh, if it is severely discomforting or uh, the minimal intake is uh, is for more than three days, and potentially life threatening means uh, the patient cannot uh, tolerate any food feed and he needs uh, hospitalization. Similarly, for vomiting, also we have a grading of uh, one, two, three, and four. The idea also, and for respiratory and urine related things, dyspnea. Grade one, dyspnea on exertion. Grade two, dyspnea with normal activity. 
glade free dyspnea at rest and potentially life threatening or glade force dyspnea requiring oxygen therapy. Similarly, is the 200 milligram to 1 gram loss per day, or if it is less than 0.3 percent or less than 3 gram per liter, or mild. While uh, in great it is one to three gram loss per day, or point three to one percent, or three to one gram per liter. Similarly, we have uh, gross hematuria, microscopic only, it is grade one. Gross or no clot, it is grade two, and gross plus clot, it is grade three. And obstructive, there is a potential of urine, then we call it as grade four, or potentially life threatening. Similarly, for Mr. other, hello. So, uh, sorry, uh, so your audio is not very clear. Can you please speak a bit louder? Okay. Thank you. So, <clears throat> I think now it is okay, no? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. So, we have seen that different uh, symptoms also been categorized into grade 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Uh, and uh, we need to consult this uh, table whenever we find such kind of a case. And it is very difficult to remember all those things. And uh, let us now come to drug substitution. The so substitution versus switch, we all know that if a single molecule is uh, changed, uh, then it is called a, uh, from the same drug class, then it is called as a substitution. It is usually done for uh, side effects. And switch means when the treatment fails and we, uh, ART regimen is uh, totally changed. That is one from a new class and uh, other molecules which are not been experienced by the patient earlier, then we call it a switch. When drug interruptions are required, such as for severe and life-threatening adverse reactions, it is important to consider the various half-lives of ARB drugs. For example, when an NRTI needs to be discontinued, a staggered approach should be followed in which the use of the NRTI backbone is prolonged for two to three weeks. Alternatively, the NRTI could be temporarily replaced with a Posted PI. So the general guidelines uh, for uh, drug interruptions are that uh, the principle is that single drug substitution for toxicity should be made within the same ARB class. If a severe or life threatening toxicity occurs, all ART should be stopped until the toxicity has resolved and the revised regimen commenced when the patient has recovered. Whenever an ARB toxicity is suspected, rule out other OIs or other conditions that may mimic uh, this and always grade the toxicity uh, uh, according to its severity and we need to record those findings in the white card. For patients with dual toxicity to nevirapine and nifavirenge needing substitution with PIs, these regimens must be started after COE or ART plus center uh, consultation and approval for, uh, through ESSF. Drug toxicities and drug substitution. So if it is uh, uh, the induced the severe anemia, neutropenia, lactic acidosis, then we substitute zidobudin with tenofovir. Now, if there is a hypersensitivity reaction with abacavir, then we substitute abacavir with uh, tenofovir or zidobudin if, the, if there is no anemia. And uh, if the tenofovir gives us to renal tubular dysfunction, Fanconi syndrome, or bone mineral density loss, then we change tenofovir with abacavir. And if a range, if it produces uh, neuropsychiatric symptoms or severe life threatening Stephen Johnson syndrome, we replace if a range with dolutagravir. And also for uh, uh, persistent uh, neuropsychiatric uh, manifestation, also we shift the patient to dolutagravir based regimen that is dolutagravir will replace the if a range. Now, both if a range and nevirapine, persistent and Severe central nervous system toxicity is possible with both the drug and acute symptomatic hepatitis, severe or life threatening rash like Stephen Johnson's, severe neuropsychiatric manifestation. Then we replace uh, ifavirenge and nevirapine with uh, dolutagravir. Now, if dolutagravir produces uh, complications of toxicity in the form of uh, 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 in, a, in, a, in, a, in a pregnant uh, woman, then we should replace it by ifavirenge. Uh, if a range bands regimen with appropriate two NRTI, as for example, TLE, and uh, refer the patient, and we should uh, we should uh, refer to following table for additional management information. For example, atazanavir, ritonavir, 
intolerance uh, in case of atenosinovir retinavir intolerance we can go for dtg similarly for lopinavir retinavir also we can go for we can replace it by dtg and for multiple nrtis uh, like zinuburi nabakavir ttf toxicities we can go for dtg in combination with appropriate boosted pi now management of adverse drug effects including substitution uh, hepatotoxicity hypersensitivity reactions uh, risk factors of the co-infection with hepatitis B and C, and management is substitute with another therapeutic class, uh, an ifavirinj or posted PI. Now, if the patient is older than 60 years and has insomnia, we can consider morning dosing or substitute ifavirinj by boosted PI or raltegravir. And weight gain in older subjects uh, more than 60 years, low CD4 count, high viral load, and female gender and the use of tenofovir alphanamide. These are the all risk factors for weight gain. And we should monitor body weight and uh, promote anti-obesity measures such as diet and physical exercise. If significant increase uh, despite uh, the uh, the physical measures, we should consider substituting ifavirinj or boosted PI. Now, drug substitution guidance in impaired renal function. Uh, preferred drug regimen is abacavir, lamivudine, dolutagravir with dose adjustment of lamivudine according to creatine clearance. For PLHIV with creatine clearance more than 30 ml per minute, and no dose adjustment is required and we can give full dose of abacavir and lamivudine. And for patients with creatine clearance less than 30 ml per minute, if uh, lamivudine 100 mg single tablet is not available, then full dose of abacavir and lamivudine can be given with close monitoring with renal functions and repeated tests till creatine clearance improves. If creatine clearance uh, worsens, then the ART must be stopped and the case must be referred immediately to SUSEP for opinion. So I think it is this much only. Thank you. So if there is any question, please. Thank you so much, sir. I'll just check the chat box for questions, sir. Uh, so we have one question. Uh, participants can also unmute their mic and ask questions. Oh, Kiran, sir, can you give mic access to participants, please? Yes. Yeah. Uh, question from the chat box, sir. A PLHIV on TLD regimen transitioned from TLE to TLD. Now developed renal abnormality, so changed to ALD as creatine clearance was 35. Presented with severe GI side effects. Headache, severe itching, but no rash, no indications of OI. Exposed to zidovudin and stavudin in the past. Patient is not ready to take ALD because of severe, uh, severe side effects. Kindly advise regarding ART regimen. Hmm. So the patient was exposed to zidovudin earlier. Yeah. Yes, sir. So uh, so was it stopped because of ART failure or it was stopped because of uh, intolerance? Uh, Dr. Srinath, sir, can you please unmute your mic? Uh, Dr. Srinath, sir, can you please unmute your mic? Yes, ma'am. Uh... Uh, Zidodin toxicity was developed, so the regimen was changed to TLE previously. So what kind of uh, toxicity is it? The bone was anemia, sir. Anemia, sir. Okay. How, what was the grade of that anemia? Uh, sir, I, exactly, I am not sure, sir, because it was done around uh, 2013 or 14 sometime. So okay. I, I wasn't there in the ART at that time. So I'm not sure about the grade of uh, anemia. Let me tell you, let me tell you that uh, this is the importance why we need to uh, uh, record it in the white word. So for example, the grade is uh, only mild, uh, mild kind of uh, uh, anemia. Then we can uh, go for the reinstitution of the zidovudin also. But if it is severe, we should not go for it. So knowing the zidovudin uh, grade of toxicity is also important. 
So if uh, what happens with uh, abacavir, lenibudine, and dolutegravir? Patient develops headache. Yes, sir. Severe headache and GI uh, side effects. Uh, severe gastritis kind of thing, and she is not able to tolerate. So, so, so. If it is gastritis, severe gastritis, there is GI symptom, then it can be due to hypersensitivity to abacavir also, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, GI and if there are any respiratory symptoms, then probably it is. Uh, yes, she is completely uh, fine with uh, other symptoms, sir. No OI symptoms, sir. Yeah. So, in case of difficult multiple energy, so it is a case of multiple energy exposure, is not it, sir? Yes, sir. So, in case of multiple energy exposure, our guideline uh, mandate us to send the patient to the So, first of all, decide for uh, at in this case. Okay. 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 Probably they will go for zero if the side effect is there. I mean, the grading of the uh, side effect was high, and with monitoring, they may go for it. So it depends on the subtype that it is multi uh, NRT. Right? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, I'm Dr. Sukumar from JST Charity Mysore. Previous guidelines were uh, that uh, below, uh, so creatinine clearance uh, below 50 ml per minute. Lamudin used to be used to give 150 mg. Now you are telling that uh, more than 30 ml in uh, Lamudin 300 mg can be given. Yes. Please clarify, sir. Yeah, actually, what happened with uh, see medical science should evolve in science. You no, know, with uh, as the days passes by, when the accumulation accumulation of evidences come in, then uh, we uh, our practice also change. So with the current evidence. It is seen that uh, with uh, Abacavir, we can continue Lenibudin if the creatine clearance is more than that. So, so we have uh, lost your voice again. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. So what I was saying that uh, medical science is an evolving branch. So with the newer studies, accumulation of newer evidences, uh, our practice also changes. For that reason, with the newer evidences, it has been seen that uh, lemibudin can be continued with full dose in uh, along with apocavid if the creatine clearance is more than 30. So this is, this so is the recent guidelines, okay? Yeah, it is recent guidelines, no. Based on the recent evidences only, sir. Remember that here we are using with apocavid, not with tenophobia. Yes, yes, sure. Mm. So, with, in combination with Abacavir, it has been seen in different studies that Lemibudin can be given full dose and Abacavir, as you know, has no uh, renal toxicity, so we can give it full. Okay, thank you. Any more questions from the participants? Sir, previously in GFR, Mm -hmm. Less than 50 we used to give. Now we have mentioned in the talk that it is less than 60. So uh, less than 60 should we change, you know, change the drug in a way? They have written if the baseline is GFR. Okay. And base, already the patient is having, say, hypertension, diabetes, and you also find that the EGFR is less uh, and the creatine also high, then probably it will not be possible on our part to continue tenophobic in that uh, case. No. Uh, uh, in previous guideline also, if you remember, there was uh, a contraindication for uh, TLE in case the patient has got uh, advanced uh, diabetes and hypertension. Do you remember, sir? In, the previous, yes, in the previous guideline also, it was written. Yes. In the, uh, so now they say if it is less than, in the baseline, uh, EGFR is less than 60 or creatine is high, it is better to avoid. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any more questions? Participants can also post questions in the chat box. So there's a question in the chat box. Cutoff for CC is 30 ml. Is it correct? I could not get it properly. Yes. For the continuation of full dose of Abakabir and Lemibudin, creatinine clearance should be more than 30. Hmm. But if it is less than 30, we should not go for full dose of lemibudin. We need to give titrated dose of lemibudin. Or if we give, then we need to monitor the patient closely. If the creatine clearance improves over time, then we will continue. Or if it worsens, we will stop and immediately refer the patient to Sasar. 
Dr. Vinanda ma'am, any more questions on this? Oh, sir, I don't think there are any questions. Uh, there were lots of problem with my voice because I'm having this common cold for the okay. last two, three. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you, sir, so much for facilitating this session. Well, is yeah. The feedback poll is now visible on your screen. There are four questions in all. Please answer all the four questions. Requesting all the participants to take the feedback poll. A quick uh, announcement for all the participants. The next session will be held on 25th of uh, January. And the topic is ART treatment failure in adults and adolescents. Also kindly note that uh, the attendance uh, and the pre-test, post-test uh, uh, attempt is being shared with NACO. We are sharing the state-wise details with NACO. So please make sure that you attend, uh, uh, you attempt the pre-test and the post-test questions as well as attend the RDLS sessions. Oh, so there's a question in the chat box. If on hemodialysis, can we give full dose of ARD? Rajib, sir? Yeah. I'm just searching it is there in the uh, here only. Okay. Is it modified uh, PPT? Because in the original PPT it was there. Uh, the uh, creatine clearance, table of creatine clearance was there. Mm. I don't know. Uh, it should be somewhere here. So try with control F. You may get the term. Yeah, yeah. Requesting all the participants to take the feedback poll in the meantime. Uh -huh. So, this is uh, taken from the operation uh, technical guideline, NACO technical guideline 2021. So, here you see for hemodialysis, every seven days we have to give tenofovir. And for, uh, uh, for uh, lemibudin, it is 50 milligram uh, first and then 25, 25 milligram once a day to be continued. Madam, I think uh, this is what you were asking me, no? patient on hemodialysis we are not we are giving full full dose every seven day for tenofovir and 25 milligram uh, every day starting with the first dose 50 milligram i think i'm clear now no all right so i think these slides were hidden so we'll just have to check after the session uh, even the previous slides sir it was hidden no so i was also thinking that uh, where it has gone yeah <laughs> Uh, maybe you can explain these two slides, sir. Uh, again, hidden or what? 
uh, it is 34 and 35. The previous one also, sir. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> So tenofovir induced renal toxicity, uh, we measure EGFR pretreatment and reduce tenofovir dose if EGFR is less than 60 ml per uh, minute. Now, we should assess the risk based on age, if it is older subject, body weight, if it is a lean and thin one, and EGFR less than 90 ml per minute, and other renally excreted drug. The patient can have a number of other drugs which are metabolized through uh, kidney or uh, can produce uh, renal toxicity, then we need to consider all these factors. And then we measure every three months for one year, then biannually. What are the factors? These are one, two, three, four. That is EGFR, functional excretion of phosphate, and the urine protein creatine ratio, urine glucose, and tubular proteinuria, as for example, RPF, that is renal blood flow, if available. And then we stop tenofovir if uh, there is significant and sustained changes is one to four. There is EGFR2, urine glucose. If there is sustained changes, then we should stop tenofovir. And we can continue tenofovir with close monitoring if there is small increase in five only. That is tubular proteinuria. That is blood flow is renal blood flow is reduced wherever it is available. We, we can go for it. And if we are in doubt, we should liaise with, with the nephrologist. Now, the question of uh, drug doses uh, in accordance with the uh, creatine clearance. So if it is 30 to less than 50, the tenofovir dose should be 300 milligram every 48 hours, that is alternate day. And uh, the levibutin dose would be uh, 150 milligram once a day instead of 300 milligram. Now, uh, if it is uh, 10 to less than 30 creatine clearance, then the tenofovir dose would be 300 milligram twice a week. And the lemibudin dose would be 150 milligram first dose and then 100 milligram once a day. Now, if it is less than 10, if it is less than 10, uh, tenofovir is not recommended. And uh, uh, lemibudin can be given 150 milligram as first dose and then 50 milligram once daily. And if the patient is on hemodialysis, then again tenofovir can be given 300 milligram once every week and uh, lemibudin to be given 50 milligram on the first day and then 25 milligram once daily. So <clears throat> again, there are some problem because single dose tenofovir is not available in many of the cases, many of the places. Single dose lemibudin also may not be available. So it is a tricky thing. Uh, I think SASEP should uh, uh, make it available or the COE should make it available and uh, state Ace control society can also procure uh, the number required for uh, this kind of titrated doses. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Any more questions from the participants? Uh, Victoria Hospital, you have raised your hand. Would you like to unmute your mic? I think it has been done by mistake. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for facilitating this session. Thank you to all the participants for patient listening. Uh, so can we conclude the session now? Oh, yeah. Sorry, sir. There's one more one more question in the uh, chat box. Uh, single drug with specified dosage is not available at ART centers. So most of the patients have to be referred to COE. Is that yes. correct? Yes, sir. It is very, very correct. And uh, from COE, the single molecules are available there. Or once they uh, recommend the patient uh, on titrated dose, the same dose can be provided by the COE to the ART center or it can be procured by the uh, uh, SACS locally. You are very much correct, sir. <clears throat> so can we come to the session now? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, then, sir, we can stop the recording. Thank you, everyone.